Hello, welcome to Kosher and Delicious. I'm Rabbi Yaakov Spivak. You know, uh, we a lot of us remember when we were kids, uh, standing in the kitchen and watching our mother and our grandmother uh, baking and making some delicious stuff. But actually, you know, we thought it was just Ma or Grandma baking, but we were looking at an artist many times. We were looking at people who transferred an art from the old world to this world. And where could you get anything better than when you have old world know-how and tradition and you mix it with 21st century technology. But well, we have a baking artist who does just that, and her work speaks for her. She is uh, the chief baking officer of Magnolia Bakery, and if the name rings a bell, it should because Magnolia Bakery has a great presence in the media, and they have stores all over the world, and all of the bakeries in America are certified kosher. Here in, in New York, it's certified kosher by United Kosher Supervision, and when you get something sent out to you wherever you're watching this in America, it is certified by UKS, United Kosher Supervision. My great pleasure to introduce to you the Chief Baking Officer of Magnolia Bakery, the brains behind the mixing bowl. <laughs> Bobby Lloyd. Bobby, welcome to the program. That was the best intro ever. Thank you, Rabbi Spivak. First, I want to thank you so much for hosting this today and for being such a fantastic and wonderful supporter of Magnolia Bakery for so many years. Uh, we're very grateful for our, our partnership and relationship with you. Well, I want to tell you that I, I should tell the audience now when you look through Bobby's book and that's what we're talking about here Bobby's book is the Magnolia Bakery Handbook and it is so beautifully in, uh, illustrated with beautiful pictures you, yes. you, you want to show it to him and we'll uh, and we'll uh, try to show it there it is on the screen uh, it is fantastic beautiful. and we'll tell you how to get a copy of it uh, uh, where is it going to be available Bobby you can pre-order it now through Amazon, um, through HarperCollins, and through the Magnolia Bakery website, where if you order it from us, you'll get a signed copy. Woohoo! Okay, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So I, I would like to um, tell you something. You know, we go, you're going to talk about uh, all the various uh, ingredients and all the secrets that uh, Magnolia Bakery has. I just want to uh, caution the audience that whenever you see, Bobby says sugar goes into a, a, an ingredient or into a mix, don't think you don't have to put the sugar in. Even though Bobby, Bobby comes, personality comes through is so sweet, you still need the sugar anyway. And I, I want to, uh, <laughs> to tell you about it. Tell us a little bit about your book and about your history. You are a very, very interesting personality where you came from and how you started and how Magnolia Bakery became a worldwide presence. So, you know, Magnolia Bakery is going to be 25 years old this coming summer in 2021. And Magnolia is, is at the time when it opened in 1996, the thing that was resonating with people and why it became so popular, it was the type of desserts that you would have at home that your grandmother made or your great grand like me, I had a great grandmother that lived to be 99 and was still cooking and baking. And I think it brought back, and we always like to say, harken back to another er era. But it definitely brought memories back to a lot of people who would walk in and go, oh, my grandmother used to make that coconut cake or German chocolate cake. I haven't had it in years since my mother made it last. So that was our goal in the growth of Magnolia. But also in this book, the handbook, my goal was I was lucky to have a mother, a grandmother and a great grandmother that all loved to be in the kitchen and loved to bake. In that era, in the 50s and 60s, and probably into the 70s, um, my mother would never go to someone's house without taking a cake or something sweet or some cookies. If you were invited for dinner, brunch, a birthday party or something, you always came with a gift. So I've always looked at baking as being giving a little part of yourself to someone else. We do it for love. You know, when you're making a dinner, you taste the dinner as you're going along, you make add a little more salt, add some lemon juice, you adjust the balance. But baking, you can't do that. You gotta wait till the item is finished. And then you still can't cut into it because you're gifting it to someone. So it, it, it is a, a labor of love. You know, I, I must tell you the truth, when I was flipping through the uh, 
the, my digital copy of the book that I received, you want to go in there and say, isn't this for real? It is so delicious and so wonderful. People would say for years, well, when can you get a quality product that's kosher like that? And I'm telling you, this is top of the line beautiful. Now, the obvious question that's going through uh, uh, my uh, uh, viewer's mind is this, Bobby. You know, that looks so professional. When you go to Magnolia Vega, it was so, so professionally done. How close can the average owner of the uh, Magnolia Bakery Handbook, how close can he or she hope to come to the beautiful things that you made there? Or that takes too much precision and experience as a baker. What is the, the, vari the variables over here? What are they? So one of the reasons I named this the handbook and it says a complete guide for the home baker. I don't know if that's backwards or not, but it's meant to be exactly that, a guide. I have the cookbook from my great grandmother that was written in 1934 and she passed it down through generations. And I found it so interesting that the same information applied way back then because you know, baking and cooking is science so that Whatever information, you know, how to whip cream, the technology of whipping cream hasn't changed, just the equipment has changed. Right. But it's still the same process. So I wrote, it's a complete guide for the home baker, which means, yeah, maybe this cover, which you can see is oh, quite complex. Man, that's cool. That one is, it's, it's actually very easy to do, but it's time consuming. So most, maybe most home cooks won't make this. It's very beautiful, it's aspirational. But it is easy enough to do. You're just going to make a mess because it takes a lot of buttercream and a lot of bags and a lot of piping tips and whatnot. But all the other recipes are meant to be simple enough that you can follow the directions pretty easily and end up with a product that will be very close to the way I did it. And even the photographs, I tried to keep the photographs not too perfect. Um, you know, sometimes you'll see images on social media and then they're so perfectly photoshopped. We didn't do that. We didn't do any Photoshop. You can Photoshop see some of the. That's not Photoshop no, at all. Wow. Not at all. So you can see, like behind me on the wall here, those are images that we did here, literally in my test kitchen. We made 20, 30, 40 recipes a day, and we were shooting for over a two week period. I made all that product right here in my little kitchen in the office. So it, it is, um, you don't have to have any skill to do it. But by the time you've made the recipes in the book, you will be skilled. Right. We're talking to Bobby Lloyd, uh, Chief Baking Officer of Magnolia Bakery. Uh, Magnolia heard the name because they have a great media presence, as does Bobby, who appear, who's appeared in many, many programs. Uh, the obvious question is, you're, you're producing a, a, a work of art, and when you go into Magnolia Bakery, you see how handcrafted. How do you mass produce like that? and still come up with a product that you have. But that's the secret you're not gonna share with us. No, actually, you, you hit on something really important. We don't mass produce. We do it in small batches in every store all day, every day. So that's the difference from a lot of big commercial bakeries who make things in gigantic, huge batches. We're not doing that. We're making it in um, the maximum amount of cupcakes in one batch I think is seven dozen. So yeah, that's more than you would make at home but we'll make seven dozen 20 times a day. So each and every time it's made in a small batch, we monitor it very closely so we can be sure that you're getting the freshest batch of cupcakes possible. We do the same thing with brownies. We only make 24 at a time. If we need more brownies, it takes five minutes to whip it together, 20 minutes in the oven, you got brownies. So Bobby, explain to me, uh I, I follow you on Facebook too. When you you're always coming up with new new recipes and new designs. How does that work? I mean, uh, you just get inspired one day. I mean, uh, how often do you come up with new new ideas? Interestingly, some of the new ideas are actually very old ideas. So it might be a recipe that was mine from historically that my grandmother made passed down through the ages that we just never did at Magnolia Bakery. So we might add that product now, but there are other things that I, I, I watch to see what's happening season by season and trying not to be trendy because we want to be classic and true to the taste of the ingredient that we're using. But some of the decorations you see, um, those are fun. You always look for what's happening. Like Halloween is coming up. So we've got these super cute monster cakes 
that we're launching this week. Um, you, know, you gotta have fun with every season. Wow, I mean, and one thing, another thing in the book that I noticed, you are a perfectionist, and you say, you're very careful to say that when I give you a, a measure, it should be exact. How, uh, I mean, what kind of variables are if you're not exact in what you're doing? I don't know if you if I'm, uh, should uh, talk about that. I mean, if you're yeah. wrong. You know, baking, as they say, is a science. I like to say that baking is a study in patience. Um, when my daughter was younger, she would tell me that I was micromanaging her every time she'd try to bake. And I'd say, no, honey, I'm not micromanaging. I'm telling you that if you don't follow the instructions, it won't come out. So I had to allow her to go through the process and make the mistakes on her own, which she did, to learn that when it says a cup of sugar, you need to measure it and level it to be a cup of sugar. Don't pack your flour down. I like to bake in um, weight using a scale. And I think more and more home cooks are learning that using a scale is actually so much easier. I think in, you know, in the past, people thought it was for professional bakers only, but actually it's, it's way easier. You don't have to wash a bunch of measuring cups. You can basically use two bowls, dump it all in, weigh as you go, and that's it, two bowls to wash. So getting used to that takes a little bit of time, but it is much easier. I have another uh, thing I want to bring up. I mean, you're kosher in the United States, but I, I, I know that when you, uh, what, where are you in, in, in the rest of the world? I know you're not certified everywhere in the world except the U.S. Where, where, are, where are your some of your stores in, in the world? We are all over the world now. We have stores in India, um, Philippines. We're soon to be open in Turkey, soon to be open in Brazil. Um, we're in the Middle East. We're in um, UAE, Saudi Arabia, um, uh, Kuwait. Not, no, no longer in Kuwait. That store closed. But we're in Doha. Um, we're in Jordan. My goodness. And, and growing. How, we, how, go on. Go on. No, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> go how, ahead. You started this business uh, how long ago? It will be 25 years old in the summer of 2021. Now, Magnolia Bakery was started by two women, Elisa Tori and Jennifer Appel, on the quiet little corner in the West Village on Bleecker Street. And within a couple of years, their partnership split, and then Elisa Tori ended up owning it for a total of 10 years when Steve and I bought the bakery from her. So that was in 2006, so end of 2006. Come, you've come from one little store to worldwide in 25 years? Uh, in 12 years because we've all we, she had one and then we took it and in 12 years so we have about 30 stores worldwide right now my goodness and you keep the quality control over all those that's you that's your responsibility keeping the quality control all over yes the world. because everybody still bakes from scratch so we actually find it easier to train people to bake from scratch by quality ingredients um, most of the time, butter has to be imported to every country because they don't have the either they don't have access to butter or they don't have the quality that we require. Um, flour also usually has to be imported from the U.S. because there's such it's flour is very different um, in Europe and um, in the Middle East. They use a different type of flour. Italy uses semolina flour. So, <laughs> excuse me. So we make them import, but as long as they're using the proper ingredients. Um, then it's just recipes, and we hire qualified bakers and trainers, and we send our team to whatever territory is opening. So the last or the last territory or country that we opened was India, and our team went to India for six weeks. Well, so they get to travel. It's very fun. Bobby Lloyd, uh, I, I want to know. Uh, obviously, there are different tastes and different food uh, styles in different countries. Uh, baking, how, how is it that your baking, which I know is from, from Western Europe originally, how is it that countries like India and, and, and the UAE and other countries like that, how do they uh, find that? I mean, isn't it strange to their culinary tongues? You know, not so much. Like you would think it would be a little bit more. Um, but everyone, especially through social media, world travel, there are so many other brands across the globe um, from large brands like McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken is huge in other countries, which I always find bizarre. Um, but people have learned the American palate. 
But if, if the American palate for sweets is a little sweeter than some countries, especially Southeast Asia, we were in Japan, we were in South Korea, um, even though they loved our product, it was a little sweeter than what they liked. So we made some adjustments to the recipes. The other thing we do is for every country that we're in, we will create new recipes or swap out ingredients to give a nod to their country and to their palate. So in the Middle East, we do a lot of things with dates and almonds and saffron and pistachios, um, any other flavor profile wow. that is super popular in that country. In India and in the Philippines, we do things with fruits and vegetables that are common to their community wow. and just switch out a recipe. So we might make a lemon curd here, but we might do a lime curd in India That's or right. using another wow. citrus fruit. Yeah. And the same thing, we had a franchisee in Mexico. We added tres leches cake because it's incredibly popular there. But what we found out was the cake was so good and we launched that recipe in the Middle East and everyone in the Middle East fell in love with it. So they call it milk cake now. Same thing in India, they fell in love with it because it's a flavor profile they recognize. A very sweet um, uh, liquid soaked cake is a common Middle Eastern dessert. And, uh, and then it's, it's gone, it's become hugely popular. Fascinating stuff. Bobby Lloyd, uh, I want you to, it's a pleasure having you on the program. Uh, and uh, if you're in New York, uh, uh, if you're watching this in New York, it's kosher certified by United Kosher Supervision. And uh, if you're in, we're in America, it's kosher certified by various other agencies. So uh, if you're kosher, uh, you should, and you see the big crowds in there, and you should know that uh, they're there for a reason. It's an opportunity in the kosher consuming public to have something which is high quality. I want to thank you very much, Bobby Lloyd, Chief Baking Officer of Magnolia Bakery. Tell us again how they can get your book, please. So you can pre-order the book. It officially launches October 27th. You can pre-order it through Amazon, HarperCollins, I think you can order directly, or through the Magnolia Bakery website. And if you order now through the Magnolia Bakery website, you'll get a signed copy of the book. Bobby Lloyd, uh, Chief Baking Officer of uh, Magnolia Bakery. It's a pleasure to have you on the program, and you bring the sweetness of your bakery to our viewing audience, and when they taste your product, and when they order the book, it is like uh, secrets that have been held out from the public. You get a chance to look in the treasury of, of recipes of Magnolia Bakery. And the uh, culinary genius of, uh, of Bobby Lloyd, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you, Rabbi Spivak. It's always a pleasure to see you, even though it's on camera and you're in your office and I, I'm in mine. But we will see each other again at some point in the near future. And it's always a pleasure. I look Talking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the best. Thank you for being with us on Kosher and Delicious. Rabbi Yaakov Spivak and, and uh, Chazak, be strong and, and enjoy. This is JMC, the Jewish Media Channel.